Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's me, Squad 911 back again with a statue unboxing, assembly, and review video. Uh, today what we have here is the Diamond Select Toys Gentle Giant Star Wars BB-8 1-6 scale statue. Um, on one note, I just realized by reading this box, Gentle Giant Diamond Select Toys, I had no idea that they were one and the same company. I'm not sure if they one bought the other or they just joined together. I'm going to have to look that up after I do this video and I'll probably put some little titles on the bottom saying like, oh, this is what I found out. Uh, but yeah, I had no idea um, that the two companies or maybe they just joined forces to do the Star Wars line. Not sure, but I will find out and let you guys know. Or if you guys know, comment below and let me know. Um, yeah, so the story is I was looking for a BB-8 statue because, you know, he's cute. Um, I was actually looking for R2-D2 and C-3PO sideshow, but I came across this and I was looking at the sideshow BB-8, but then I realized if I'm going to display him with my um, Mythos Star Wars statues, a uh, one-quarter scale BB-8 was going to look a little too big. So figured a little smaller is better because he's droid. He's a droid, he's supposed to be smaller anyways. So one six scale um, was the better choice. Plus, um, this was a lot cheaper. So if you look at eBay prices, this particular statue goes for about 130 US to 160 US, uh, plus shipping, plus uh, eBay's uh, global shipping fee. So it would end up being about 170 to 180 USD. Um, I was able to find this on the Comic Mint on sale for $99, so, and uh, shipping was only $20. And then when it finally arrived, FedEx had hit me with uh, duties, taxes, brokerage handling fees of $18, which was not bad at all. It's pretty much just taxes and $5 of um, uh, handling fees. So. Uh, I came out a winner on that one instead of buying it on eBay, which I thought the prices were actually not bad for a polystone statue. Um, so anyways, here's the box. That's the front of the box there. Just That's exactly what the statue is going to look like, which looks pretty good so far. Now, on the bottom here, it just shows that it's a number 100, 279 of 1,000. So only 1,000 of these made worldwide. Um, top of the box just says, you know, what I've already been saying. Side of the box is a side shot of BB-8, Disney logo. On the other side, just Star Wars, no Disney, and just BB-8. And on the back, um, yeah, it just talks about BB-8 there and a shot of him from uh, the movie for The Force Awakens. All right, so... Let's start opening this guy. Not much to it, he's pretty small. And then when we first open it here, we get a little uh, certificate of authenticity, I suppose. A little bent there. Um, but yeah, limited edition number 279 of 1000, Gentle Giant. And uh, yeah, that's that right there. Put that back in its little protective baggie that still let the corner get bent. Put it over there. Looks like this has already been opened. I guess maybe it was, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if comic, the Comic Mint has a physical store. Maybe they had this displayed or whatnot. Um, but that's fine by me. Um, we will hold it while I pull it out. There. Not sure which is top and bottom. Looks like this part would be the top because it has Star Wars Gentle Giant embossed on the top of it. All right, so we'll open this up. Like so. Ooh. That's okay, that's just the silica gel packets. Um, so really, no assembly really needed. It's just the base here, very simple base, and uh, BB-8, which Looks like he's just all one piece. Even the antennas, that's crazy. Um, oh, looks like there's some extra antennas included there. Let's open this up. This is the base right here. Just a very shiny, shiny base. Um, with a little bit of, I guess, pattern there. Uh, 
and that's the base there, Gentle Giant, Star Wars BB-8, 1-6 scale, limited edition, 279 of 1000. I feel like a broken record, but uh, we'll put that here for now. And then what's left in the box is BB-8 here. I don't want to break those antennas. Just pull him up from the bag like so. Wow, he has some good weight there. Oh, and these little antennas just fell out. Maybe if they do break, you have some spares here. Kind of cool. This one looks already a little bent. Um, yeah, wow. Pretty cool. I mean, for hundred dollars us i mean what you cannot beat that even like um the way they painted the eye there it actually looks like it's lit up i know bb has a bunch of flashy lights um sideshow's version has some uh, light up features but i mean it's more than double the price of this i think that one goes for like 350 to 400 us probably probably in the mid 300s um but uh, yeah, I mean, for a hundred dollars, you can't go wrong. Oh, there's a little magnet there. Can't go wrong. Mm, guys, check it out. Um, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I was just looking for a better deal on BB-8 and they had it on sale for $99 US, $99.99. So I rounded up a hundred dollars. Um, right off the bat, I kind of see some um, inaccuracies. Um, BB-8's antennas, should not both be on the silver part of his head. I think, well, there's a, it's supposed to be here. One of the antennas is supposed to be here. I think, I'm not sure if it's the bigger one or the smaller one. I'm pretty sure it's the bigger one. It's supposed to be put there. Um, I mean, when you display them like that, it doesn't look that bad, but they really should be pretty close together. And this is the one that Ray fixes on him, the smaller antenna. Um, so not sure if, the magnet just sticks anywhere. Nope. Oh, it's right in the middle. Uh, that's exactly where they put uh, the magnet. Hmm. So that's BB-8 on his base right there. I mean, there's nothing really to it. Let me just like zoom in a little bit for you guys and then bring the camera down. I guess I can zoom back out a little bit. That's him right there. And uh, he can just spin on his base like so on that magnet, just pivoting on it. Um, really nice detail. Some weathering there. Um, I mean, for $99, what? You can't beat that. Um, looking more closely I mean, the paint is, is done a little sloppy, but I mean, all in all, it's a pretty good job. You can see the little runoff on red there. Um, the weathering is kind of cool. It's kind of almost the size of a baseball, just slightly bigger, but definitely a lot heavier than a baseball. Um, there's even some detail underneath here, which is pretty cool. And then, yeah, those are the antennas there. So the antenna should be here. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna figure out which one exactly it is and snip it. And then maybe just like fill it. Or because they give you extra antennas, I might just clip it slightly longer and just file it so it's smooth and then maybe paint the silver back on top. And then maybe kind of drill a hole bigger there and then put the extra antenna there. Cause I mean, for a hundred bucks, like why not? It could be a cool project, All right? I might actually do that tonight and do a video on it and attach it to this uh, review. Hmm. You know what guys, I think I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, turn the camera off. I'm going to go to the garage, get a whole bunch of tools and see what I can do with this and make it more accurate. Um, yeah, 
while you guys wait here, I'm going to go grab my other BB-8 and we're going to see how, uh, where the antennas are actually supposed to be. Be right back. I'm just walking across my basement, taking the head off of my remote control BB-8. And it looks like, what I'm going to show you guys, here's my uh, remote control BB-8 here. It's a birthday present from my brother many years ago. So the small antenna is here, and the big antenna is where I thought it was, in the back. Like that. And I think they had installed the antenna here, where it should be just like a circle. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So, I don't know what happened there at the design team. Oh. They probably just got confused. Oh, maybe it's supposed to go there because, you know, it's on the silver. It shouldn't go on the back, but uh, it does go on the back there. So, yeah, off to the garage I go, grab some tools, and uh, let's see if we can fix this thing together on camera. Together, huh? Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I got some tools here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I got these little clippers. I'm going to, you know, give them a little clip there, have a little file, kind of like file down the little stub that's going to be there. Um, I have a drill bit and I think it is almost the same size. This is a 1 16th drill bit. Hopefully it's the same size as this antenna. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that route or if I'm just going to dig a little shallow hole from that little point on the head in the back there and then just kind of dab some gorilla crazy glue this is the gel stuff so it's quite thick it doesn't like ooze everywhere you can just like dab a little bit and it's very very strong um yeah we'll see as we go along and of course some good old painter's tape to protect around um this bb8 so let us do this wish me luck um well, what else I brought was a little uh, Dremel here. It's kind of like a cordless, but there's still a cord, but it's wire. I don't know what they call this, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty convenient. This will be my first time using it. Um, you can just use uh, their 20 volt max battery there. It's made by Works, and then you turn that, and it spins. I don't know if I'm going to use that to file it. It might be too powerful. Uh, who knows what's going to happen here? So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take BB-8 here, move the base away, don't want to scratch that, have the extra antennas we'll put over there as well. Okay, oops. Bring that over there. And here's BB-8, hopefully it doesn't roll off the table. What I'm going to do is Try to protect the rest of BB-8 by making that hole in the tape. Kind of putting that through there. All right. I think it's the big antenna, right? Yeah, it's the big antenna. And we clipped it. Oh my god, that was scary. Whew. Okay, so... Huh. When you look at this, it's just... I don't know if you guys can see. It's actually a metal rod that they just like wrapped in paint or some sort of like plastic coating. Huh. So right now... Here we have a little stub. I guess I can kind of remove the tape a little bit. And then so we have this little bit protruding out of the head there. I thought that it was just going to be polystone. So I might just cut it down a little lower. And that, wow, it bounced off the wall, off my cabinet back there, and then back over onto this table. And now it's on the floor, that's kind of crazy. So there, I've kind of cut it down and the silver almost matches there. 
I mean, if I can file it, it might even give it the look of, of that kind of circle there. So I think I'm going to take my little rat tail file here and see what I can do. Maybe I'll put this back over it while I file it. Just got to match it up. All right. It's definitely metal. It's got to go light. It's actually very light metal. So just my filing here is already taking quite a bit off of it. So I'll just do a couple of passes. And then the tape is protecting what's around it. I'll probably do a circular motion-ish. And that feels pretty good so far. Probably go a little bit more. Get it right flush with his head. Look how shiny that looks right there. Um, I might not even have to paint over it. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the tape a little bit there. You can kind of see it's still protruding out quite a bit. Um, so I might go a little bit harder. Got to make sure you stay on that exact point. I don't want to eat through the tape. Right now it seems like it's flush with the tape. But the tape is quite thick, painter, green painter's tape. All right, and lift that off like that. Let you guys see my progress there. Looks like a little circle. I can probably I don't know, maybe dab a little black dot right in the middle so then it kind of gives it the look of that little hole there. I can't believe I'm doing this on camera. If I mess up, we're... you guys can laugh at me in the comments below. All right. Let's do that a little bit more. Maybe I'll do it on a different angle so I can get every bit of it. But I'm very uh, pleased that it's metal in there, so it's actually quite strong. Okay, I think that's as much as I'm going to do it. It is quite flush, maybe like half a millimeter. I might still dab a little, if I dab a little bit of silver paint on it, it won't be so shiny, which I have somewhere. I think the best paints to have if you're like touching up some statues that you have uh, would be silver, black, and white. Oof. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do any more. It's just a, a hair high. I think I should stop. Maybe one or two more passes. Oh, is... Now the hole on this is ripping up. So I'm worried I'm going to hit the paint soon. Yeah, I think I'm done. Okay, so that is that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab some silver paint. And some paint brushes. Now this silver paint probably doesn't match. This is the silver paint that I have. This is my little precision brush here. 
So I just shake it up a little bit and I just dab the very top part there, close it up. Let's see. Don't laugh at me guys, this is, I just dab it over the silver metal. quiet it's because I'm trying to concentrate the silver matches pretty good sorry if it's off camera I'm just trying to not screw this up too badly I'm just putting it very close to my face Trying to take off the excess paint by putting on my hand so I can wash it off. And I think that is pretty good. I don't know, maybe the macro on my camera will really make me, once I watch this video over, it's going to look so bad. Right here kind of looks like there's a pit there, but I think it's just from was there before. You just couldn't see it because the antenna was in it. But I think that's not bad. I might just put a little black dot on the top there later once this dries. And uh, I think it'll be pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure to wash these brushes after. Try to get this paint off my hands. Just rub it off a little bit. See, not bad. Okay, so next is to try, I guess I can take the old antenna and it will have to go right here. Hmm. And I think it's the size of this of this, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like I would have to go straight, but then if I slip, I could go past it. So do I go in straight? Well, wow, it's already taking off. So I'm just uh, kind of twisting it with my hand there, just trying to get it started. I obviously don't want to go in an angle like that, but uh, the hole is getting bigger there, kind of with no effort at all. So then I think I'll just use the new antenna if anything. So I would just have to stick it in like so. I might even have to repaint the antenna to look like that one. I'm not sure. I have to go and turn on the movie and see what color I could, then I can just paint it. If it's just black and silver, that's easy. I have black and silver paint. But it'll pretty much just go right here. And this antenna kind of looks like it's uh, warped a little bit. I'm not sure if this one is too. Yeah, this one has a little, like right from the middle up from, from to the ball, it's uh, kind of off. Yeah, you guys can see that there. Okay. So maybe I'll try this piece. Kind of pick at it. I don't want to chip it off either. Should have been a dentist or something. No, definitely don't want to be a dentist. I mean, if you're a dentist, that's fine, but I, I don't want to be a dentist. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to protect, of course I do that, protect here in case of any slippage. And then I'll probably use this piece that I use for the antenna. That's exactly where the hole is.
I'm just doing this by hand. And it's actually taking quite a bit of material off, so I'm pretty... I am pretty shocked. I guess polystone isn't as tough as I thought. You guys might have thought it was not as tough, but I thought polystone was pretty strong. So, just actually doing it with my fingers. I don't even need to use a Dremel. I think a Dremel would have just put a hole right through this. I am literally just pushing gently down. Oops, I don't know what just happened there. I think it might have chipped. No, it didn't chip. I will keep at it. I'm just pushing gently down and just twisting with my fingers. But I think I have to go a little deeper this way. Because if I go down, straight down, it's just going to come out, it's going to be too thin and come right out the side. Um, if anything, I'll use the old antenna, I'll clip it on an angle and then it should kind of fall in straight. I think that's enough. Okay, you guys can see the hole is much larger now. I take the old antenna. It's kind of clipped on an angle, and I can kind of just sit it in there. Let's see what I can do. I am sweating. It's hard to do it while uh, doing a video. So maybe instead of trying to clip it, I will file it. So I'm going to file it on an angle like this. You know what? I don't need the Dremel anymore, so I'm going to turn that off, get it out of the way. Get back this. Keep filing it on an angle. And when I clipped it, it kind of like crushed it a little bit. I mean, so... Then, if anything, I can dab the end with some white paint. But that angle is definitely not sharp enough. I mean, it's too, my angle is too sharp, so I got to... Right now, I think I have it on a 45 degree angle. So I probably just want to flatten that a little bit. This files down very easily. It's almost like filing down a little piece of wire. Okay, so you can see that angle there. It's not much. And then it's just going to pop into there. And I kind of feel like the hole needs to be a little bit bigger. And now the antenna doesn't look that high, huh? It's supposed to be actually quite taller. So let's compare it to this one. So that's the new antenna there. Like that. And it's quite a bit shorter, so I might have to use the new antenna. Because then it will have the height. Unless I clip this one to make it shorter. <laughs> oh, what did I get myself into? But... It looks like it will go in there, not bad. Yeah, okay. So, let's see here. I'm going to take another. I take the tape here. Stick a hole through it again. Kind of match it. With the hole there. Might have to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that sucks because all the metal dust on the table sticking to the magnet here. 
So I'll have to keep it away. I don't want it to go on the base and then scratch up the base, right? That's not what we want. So I'm trying to make the tape hole here a little bit bigger. What can I do? So much harder to do this uh, on video. There we go, like that. This will be the antenna. I'm gonna stick it right there. All right. Oh, this is just gonna get swept over to this side here. See what we can do. Good old Gorilla Glue. I think it's probably best to dab it on the actual antenna here. Little dab will do ya. I just touched that, so now my fingers are probably gonna stick together. Not sure if I should even have tape there while I do this. <laughs> so what I probably want to do is get some crazy glue on the side so it would stick to actually the side of BB-8's head. Okay. shaky ass hands. Oh boy, don't want that to touch. Okay. Probably gonna fast forward to this. I don't think anybody wants to see me blowing on it. And now I got glue all over my table. Looks like it's sticking, but it is angled forward. So I kind of want to angle it back. That's not bad. Okay. I mean, it's not fully dry, but, uh, oh, is it falling forward? I'm not actually, I hope I'm doing this right, because his head is kind of on an angle, so I'm just kind of basing it off of that. I 
I mean, I should have got a hair dryer. It would also help with uh, that. But hey, I mean, it's on there. It might fall off if I touch it. I'm not going to touch it now until it dries. But um, that's the right spot where it's supposed to be. Hey, guys. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm basing it off another toy. I, I should have probably turned on the movie and watched it. But I'm pretty sure it goes there. Um, I think that looks great. And you can barely tell with that one. Well, not barely, but you can see it. Might dab a little bit of paint on it right now. Because um, you can kind of see some of the metal showing through. Really don't need that much. Probably get through the sides. What do you guys think? Silver is like a just a shade brighter than it. So, you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have put it all around. I should just put it on the circle. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can touch that up with my finger. And I mean, he's going to be displayed like this, so you probably won't see it and you'll barely notice that. Now I can, from me touching it, I can see the silver on it again. But I think my main concern was uh, getting that antenna on the back there. And I think I have to say mission accomplished. I touch it. Oh, it's on there pretty solid. I mean, it is, it's good. I mean, it hasn't fully cured yet. It's going to take about, I don't know, a couple of hours. Uh, but huh. I think mission accomplished. Let me just wipe off all the extra glue off the top of this and close it up so it doesn't dry up. But yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's get the other antenna off here. Push this out of the way. Make sure it is clean. What's another way to make clean is use tape. So get all that dust off the magnet. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit there. And we're gonna put them on there. There we go. So now, <laughs> thanks for uh, watching and going through that with me, guys. But now we have a movie accurate, a more movie accurate, at least, um, BB-8. Ah, let's zoom in a little bit here. With the antennas in the correct position. So if anybody has purchased this Gentle Giant BB-8, it's actually quite easy. You just saw me do it live, well, real time on, um, on the statue, and it was very easy. You, all you need is a 1 16th drill bit, a fine rat tail file, some green painter's tape, some gel Gorilla Glue, and a little bit of silver paint, acrylic paint, and a fine paintbrush. And I think it looks pretty damn good. This is my first time ever doing this on video, guys. Um, you know what, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's so small, you're probably not gonna get the detail of like the concentric rings there. But uh, you do get a little circle. And I might just dab maybe a bit of white in the middle or black, so it makes it kind of look like that dot, like it was meant to be there. I kind of like how that one was just a black dot where it should have had an antenna. Um, I don't know why they put it there, um, but uh, 
what I thought was going to be quite difficult ended up being quite easy. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this is the now fixed Gentle Giant Star Wars BB-816 scale polystone statue. Um, it looks great. Um, again, I paid $9,900 for it and uh, that's why I wasn't worried about clipping it and making more holes and gluing it to make it more accurate. It was a pretty fun project and a first for me to do this on, on video. Um, let me just fix this camera here so you guys can see him a little better. Um, yeah, um, if you can go on to the Comic Mint, I have no affiliation with them. It's just a really good deal for $99. And if you're in the US, I bet you it's probably free shipping. Um, it's a great little statue, quite detailed. Now it's accurate when it was inaccurate. Um, paint is great. Um, very simple, simple base, and uh, the colors look great. The weather looks great. I think it's a great little statue um, if you have a hundred bucks burning in your pocket. Um, I say spend it on this because it was money well spent and uh, time well spent fixing it. Uh, so I hope this video helps you guys in either fixing your inaccurate gentle giant or helps you in wanting to go out and buy one of these things. Um, so that's it for my review DIY unboxing uh, assembly uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks guys.